To solve any related rates problem, you can really proceed in three stages. Stage one would be to read the problem and draw a picture. Stage two would be to determine a relevant equation. And stage three would be to differentiate that equation with respect to time and solve for the unknown. The question actually already has sort of completed the first two stages for us. There's a picture of a parallel circuit in the textbook that looks like this. I think in this case the picture really is rather unhelpful. But what is helpful is the equation that they give us. And that equation looks like the following. Now the, the equation also tells us that the value of R1 is 80 and the value of R2 is 100. So we can go ahead and actually solve for the value of R by plugging in the known values and solving. So here's the equation after plugging in R1 and R2. And when we solve for R, we obtain the following result. Now if you have any trouble solving for R, please let me know and I'd be happy to reply in the comments. This is the value of R. Now, the third stage of solving a related rates problem is to differentiate the equation with respect to time and then plug in the known values to solve for the unknown value. Before we differentiate with respect to time, it's going to be helpful to rewrite each of the three terms of this equation by bringing the variables up to the numerators of the fractions. So we can rewrite the equation in the following manner. Basically, when we bring each term up to the numerator, we change the sign of the exponent. Since the exponents were all positive ones here, when we shift the terms to the numerators, the exponents change their sign, and in this case become negative. And this turns out to be an easier form to differentiate with respect to time. We're going to use a chain rule in which we pull the power down in front, subtract one from the power, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Remember that we're differentiating with respect to time, which means that the derivative of the inside would be dr dt in this case, this will be dr1 dt, and this will be dr2 dt. So let's go ahead and apply the chain rule to differentiate this equation with respect to time. We pull the power down in front, we recopy the inside, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which as noted was dr dt. Proceeding in a similar way produces the following results. Finally, at this stage of the problem, we can simply insert all of our known values. And we're solving for the rate at which r is changing. So we're actually solving for the following right here. The rate at which r1 is changing and the rate at which r2 is changing are both given in the problem. So those values can be found right here. This is the rate at which r1 is changing and this is the rate at which r2 is changing. So let's go ahead and plug in the known values. A couple of things to note here. First of all, the rates at which R1 and R2 are changing are both positive, so we want to make sure that we include positive 0.3 and positive 0.2. And I also had forgotten to put in a power of negative 2 when differentiating the equation. So I put that back in here. Please take note of that. I've included it down here as well. So again, we're trying to solve for dr dt, which represents the rate at which r is changing. So let's go ahead and use some, some algebra to solve for dr dt. So after solving for dr dt, you should obtain 0.132 ohms per second. As always, if any of the algebra presents difficulty for you, let me know and I'd be happy to respond.